AI or artificial intelligence is completely taking over the world. It is almost scary how smart it is. Now with that, I only can think of one possible question. Can AI make my sprint car faster? I guess there's only one way to find out. All right, so this is gonna be a really fun video. I'm actually, uh, I'm pretty excited to see what the results are gonna be. And I thought it'd only be perfect to do this video with my younger sister, Carly. Carly, how you been? Good, staying busy. A lot of you guys have been asking about an update on Carly, what her plans are for the season. We are gonna get into that at some point um, here in the next couple of weeks, but today's video is all focusing on sprint car setups with AI. So what we did here is I, uh, I asked for fans to type in questions that they would want to know, like related to setup, and then we're gonna ask it to AI, which we can type it in on the internet. It should pop up like the artificial intelligence answer, and then Carly had a great idea we're gonna go on Snapchat, like the Snapchat friend thing. That's at the top, and we're gonna ask that questions too. Uh, and I think we're gonna get some interesting responses. Kind of compare the two and just see. Yeah, see how like. See how well actually AI works. Maybe later. it's better to go the Snapchat bot for your questions. <laughs> I don't know. So the first question are what are setup blocks? Let's what actually, sh let's for? show them what a setup block is. So we got setup blocks right here. And these are how you block a sprint car, which is basically setting the ride heights and the load on each corner torsion bar. You can't have a sprint car team without them. I think that's a good question to ask the bot. Oh. <laughs> okay. So sprint car setup blocks are used to square and set the height of a sprint car's axle. Nailed it. I would say that's pretty close to yeah <laughs> that's basically a, a quick a, overview and there's even videos on it too yeah they they, they, found. they found all the videos of anyone's ever made of maybe that was too easy of a question probably but that was I mean, okay basically what I did. so ai ai nailed it which these easier questions i think like something like that obviously it's going to nail i think where it's going to get interesting is if we really deep if we really dive into setup like actual setup questions because i'm Basically, what I believe AI does is it just searches through the entire internet and ga gathers information from any article, post, whatever, and then forms kind of its answer. I, I think it's actually crazy that it can do that, but that's, I believe, how it works. We're gonna throw something a little better their way. Here we go. To tighten up a sprint car on a dry, dry slick track, you can primarily adjust the wing by moving it further back. Increases downforce and helps the car turn tighter, which is also considering adjustments like slightly raising the left front, softening the right rear spring, reducing right rear tire, tire stagger to minimize the car's tendency to slide yeah, through the corners. Cool. Dude, that's, that's pretty accurate. That's pretty accurate. Like, I mean, like, I mean, it's obviously it's not top notch, but it's the basic of like, yeah, it, it lists you a few things of what you could do. The fact too that it even got into, you know, I mean, like raising the left front, that is correct. That basically oh, sticks the right rear corner faster. Uh, like she was kind of talking, Tires. you know, stagger. That's huge. Just like any, that's very basic. Like that's more an answer I would have expected. But to soften the right rear shock, like that's gonna l allow the car to really get over and and grip up um, at certain areas in the corner. I like how it says this even, be aware that track conditions can change quickly, so be ready to make further adjustments yeah. as needed. I'm glad that it reminded us Perfect. of Perfect, who needs a crew chief? You got yeah, AI. you don't even need a crew you chief, even, you, you got, got AI. AI. Okay, so we're gonna do, what is a good baseline torsion bar setup for a sprint car? Let's see what we get. <laughs> so a typical, it says a typical baseline torsion bar setup for a sprint car would usually involve using bars with a spring rate between 925 and 1025 pounds per inch with a slight bias towards a stiffer right front bar to help um, with cornering stability. For a base, I mean, I would say not, we've never went to a 925, but. That is too soft. I mean, that's, yeah. that's way too soft. Uh, even like a 975 bar is pretty soft uh, but what they did have correct is it is very common that guys will like mainly at more at short tracks but they'll run a stiff right front bar just to keep the car keep that left rear kind of down and like I said it just really it makes it easier to drive because if you trip up on that right front corner you can't keep momentum up and you don't keep any speed going and it's always so funny too like it puts like your tire choice chassis design weight like it goes through and I mean it's just trying to remind you that there's no perfect setup which is uh that is, that is correct. I think we found our crew chief. 
<laughs> okay, let's go. We're gonna go Snapchat AI. The best torsion bar setup for a sprint car can vary based on track conditions and personal preference. A common setup is to use a stiffer bar on the right rear to help with cornering and a softer one on the left rear for better traction. For the fronts, many drivers go with the medium stiffness to balance the car. Okay, so, it, you know, a little different answer than what the, uh, the, just the internet said, but that is correct. I think it's just very common in general. If you were to give someone a baseline setup, you might go a little stiffer on the right side, a little softer on the left side. That just keeps the car with a little bit of tilt and naturally yeah. it should, you know, roll around the track. Like Carly just said, keep that left side down a little bit, get some traction. At the end of the day, if your car don't turn, you're not gonna make a lap yeah. around the track, so. Now, before we continue, Carly and I, we've been having a lot of fun with this. I wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So have you ever been working in a race shop on your cars and you know when you're doing this, you have to be focused in. Like your work here is more important than at the racetrack so you can go win races. But have you ever been working away and your phone will just not stop ringing with spam calls or text messages and you're like, who are these people trying to get a hold of me? And in today's day and age, it can get messy. It's hard to know what is real and what is fake. That's why you should look into the Aura Data Broker Opt Out where you can remove your personal information off the internet. They also offer VPN, identity, and financial services to keep yourself, your money, and all the things you care about safe. So I think we can all agree there's a lot of positives online, but it's still not worth taking that chance. To try Aura out for yourself for a two-week free trial, head on over to Aura.com slash Tanner Holmes. I put a link at the top of the description, and that should give you enough time for you to check out if any of your personal information is being exposed. No more so we're looking for right now we're looking up right rear wheel offset on a sprint car which basically if you have like a 17 inch wheel and you have a five off basically your center of your the wheel center of the tire is in a different spot than with a seven off it's still a 17 inch wheel it's just the inner and the outer are built differently to move where that center of the wheel is which then is going to change you know how that corner plants how it makes grip all that so like the higher the offset number which like a seven or an eight off is gonna be a bigger, faster, slicker racetrack where usually a smaller track, sometimes you're gonna get away with a lower offset number because tighter turns, you need the car to be a little free, you need a little more angle. Yeah, I was gonna say the track size is definitely a, a big factor when it comes to figuring out your offset. Like you said, bigger tracks. When it, the track's going slicker, you might think about maybe putting on a deeper offset, you know, an eight. Some people I've heard ran a nine before, you know, maybe Knoxville, bigger, faster Port racetracks. Royal. Yeah. Um, but then when you go to your small bull rings, definitely think consider that maybe five or six offset. And you can still get away with the bigger offset at those places, just the track conditions have to be right. But if yeah. it rains for three days, you're not gonna go out somewhere no. with a nine off on we, a quarter we've mile. Only in, this is just our experience. We had one five off and it's still brand new. We have never ran it. Yeah. It's just because we just, every track we really went to has not been hooked up and tacky enough Rough. for us to be like, let's throw a five off on. Yeah, so. we just save it for when that time comes. Yeah. But So it says the, real, the rear wheel offset for a sprint car can vary depending on track conditions, so that's right. Six inch offset is a common choice, which I would agree. A six, a six off um, across the United States factory and all the places, a seven inch offset may be used on very slick tracks. And this could also be referring to maybe even a left rear offset because I know with our left rears, um, we normally keep it between that six and seven offset range. Yeah. So that it could be referring to that too. The wrong offset can make a vehicle less stable, even if the tire and wheel have enough clearance. Okay. I feel like honestly, I felt like AI did a pretty good job, pretty good job with that one. So now we know in the future if we're in the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Why you oh, that's a good question. My buddy, our buddy Max, he said, why do bigger tires go on the that's right the side of the car? Sense. We're gonna, we're gonna ask that. In sprint cars, the bigger tire is typically placed on the right side because it creates stagger, which helps the car turn effectively on a dirt track where the car only turns left. Okay, well, we- I would say AI has been pretty accurate. Just for at least like yes. the basics, you know. I, and I kind of figured, like we said, the basic stuff was gonna be good, but I mean, it's, it's very, it's very spot on. It gives you on. options. Very, you know? very spot on. I like how it gives you options for like, it, it, it'll mention, you know, tacky versus like slicker conditions, you know? Yeah, how it like says that and it says, and then how it even reminds you to like, hey, check in with the driver yeah. and like, I, I don't know. It's just like, that, that's crazy. That's really crazy. So the Jacob's ladder here, well, let's grab one so we can at least show. I ain't getting out. <laughs> Here's your Jacob's ladder. So this holds the rear end, this hooks up to the bird cage and then um, connects basically to the chassis and then this holds the rear end 
from side to side. So this helps keep it um, in square. And it's also typically one of the first things to get destroyed when you hit the wall. Um, <laughs> yes, it's one of the first things because it's uh, you know a very light item. And like I said, it gets bent or twisted or broken. We've been, we've been through a few of these, right, Carly? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we've been through a few. A oh. Jacob's Ladder is triangular linkage on a sprint car that keeps the rear end and the car centered and stable. It's a critical component on the car suspension system. Man, there is, which like I said, I feel dumb like giving this even enough credit because it's just, it's going through the internet and it's finding all the information, but the fact that it can reword it, it's, yeah. it's kind well, of it's amazing. Crazy, you think about it, three years ago, we couldn't do that, you know? Yeah. Like, it would give you answers about, you know, like a car, like an actual vehicle you drive on the road. It's, you know, it didn't even know what yeah, sprint cars Yeah, or, or are take for. you to a random, like, I think it shows a hose heads forum or, It'll, yeah, it'll give you like websites to where you can buy them, like, you know, popular name brands too, even. Yeah, so, that's crazy. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now we know what a Jacob's Ladder is. If you see me in the stands and I'm watching Tanner, I'm looking up on AI. Oh, okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking up on AI what we can do differently. What do you do when your little 90 quad dies? <laughs> uh, you when Brad sweeps behind you and your quad breaks down. <laughs> just look at uh, you. Not ideal. That was that RPM. The quad would not yeah. start. Nothing's more embarrassing when you're not close to home. You don't have a spare quad, obviously. Everything's breaking. Yeah, and like your trip, it's going well. You've, eh, already, des you've already destroyed a car and you have this little 94 wheeler and it runs great. But it doesn't run very good. It, it started to go downhill pretty quick. And when it dies and they're like, all right, you guys can go on the track. And you're looking around like, I need a push truck. <laughs> I, my, my quad broke. Let's see, technical questions. How to jump the start. Okay, look at this. To jump the start in dirt racing, which is considered a penalty, accelerate and move your car forward before the green flag is displayed. Okay, so even AI can tell us how to do that. That's, they probably found that out at like their indoor goat grinding place probably. Yeah. More, oh, here's a good one. How to get more power. To get more power out of your sprint car, focus on optimizing the engine by adjusting the camshaft timing, increasing compression, using a more aggressive ignition system, improving intake and exhaust design, utilizing a larger carburetor fuel injection system, exploring options like nitrous, oxide, or supercharger systems to boost further or power further. We're sending this to our engine builder. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So we have okay. Steve Kinzer, Donnie Schatz, Tony Stewart. Okay. These drivers have made a significant impact in the world of sprint car racing. They're also ri rising stars mm -hmm. like Kyle Larson, Brad Sweet, who are making a name for themselves in the recent years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Kyle Larson's a rising star. All right. Well, now we, uh, going into 2025, we just added to our notebook. Uh, I will say, if you ever do have a question, you can technically, you know, you, if, you know, if you don't know nothing, you might get a little bit of information there using the internet nowadays, but thank you guys so much for watching. Carly, thank you yeah. for joining me. This Thanks was a lot of fun. Me. We're going to keep grinding away here in the shop. We got race cars to build and things are going to really start moving along here in the next couple of weeks. So, um, thanks for tuning in, hanging out with us, and we will see you all in the next show. Peace.